So, we're learning here this Maimet. We're going to conclude, I think, today. Hayyim Har It's a few days before Rosh Hashanah. So tomorrow, with Hashem's help, we could maybe do a few uh, parts of the Machzer. So bring a Machzer tomorrow so I can just point out a few things to you in your Machzer. Regardless of what type of Machzer you use, Chabad or Art Scroll, it doesn't make a difference. But uh, as far as the Mime is concerned, it's so interesting how usually I get a certain amount of hits for these Shiurim because they're longer, so less people look at them. And yesterday already it had twice or three times the amount of hits. Why? Because I put on the, on, on the, the caption, the title, you know, difference between a Chassid and a non Chassid. <laughs> I'm sure that that attracts whoever saw the titles, they click on it. It's the world we live in. It's all marketing, marketing and marketing and marketing. Okay, so now to get to the core of the issue here, we're learning about the difference between the Shamas that are Orosh, Rosh Alfi Yisrael, Tzadikim, Rebbes, and, uh, and the Shamas that are the Amcha, the regular people. And what we learned is that even the Shamis, like Moshe Rabbeinu, who was a Rabbeinu, our teacher, our leader, needs the, the Neshamas, which are called the Raglayim, right? The feet. And Moshe says, um, although Moshe is uh, well, the most modest person, nevertheless, he says, Anoichi oimid. I stand amongst you, amongst 600,000 footgoers. And see, this explains, and he explains here that the reason why Moshe was so modest is because he felt, he understood that, that what makes him, Moshe Rabbeinu, are the raglayim, are the, the regular people. And that's what a true leader is. And for that matter, you should know, it, it's not just with a, a, a leader, a Rebbe, but it, all leadership, if, if leadership does not recognize the value of its workers and employees, stay away from them. So if you want to know, for people always ask, what company should I join? A company that has a track record, that there's a good, healthy relationship between the employees and the employer, and that the ratings of, of, of the employer and the company are supported by what the employees say. It's similar to what it says in Pirkei Obis. Whoever people say about him or her, that they're special and nice and, and, and menschlich, then Hashem says, I second that. So what we understand from that is that Hashem is kind of waiting for the opinion, metaphorically speaking, for the opinion of people. And if people say they're not nice, then Hashem can't say that they're nice. So this idea that we're learning here is, is, is simple, is true in all of life. The same with choosing a shidduch. People many times are confused. So the, the th one of the things to ask, the important things, not the trivial things, the important things is, what do people say about this person? Does the person have a shame tov, a good name? And if they have a shame tov in the community, it's worth looking at them. I heard from a friend once, he asks his daughters when it's time for their shiduchim, he says, make me a list of ten things, of eight eight things that you would like to see in a possible shidduch. They make a list for their father. They give him the list, he takes the list and he tears them up, tears it up. Then he says, now make me a list, not of, of eight things that you would like, that you want, but make me a list of two things that you need. And you don't get more than two needs. 
And he says, those two needs is what I'm going to hone in on and find for you. And it might sound like, uh, you know, funny or strict, but there's a lot of truth to it. Again, I'm not saying necessarily two, it could be one, it could be three, but you can't get everything. In life, you don't have everything. So focus on what's most important. The Rebbe is saying over here that Moshe Rabbeinu understood that what's most important for him to be a Moshe, to be a leader, is if he recognizes the greatness of the people. And how does he recognize the greatness of people? Because they recognize that his greatness. In other words, when he has uh, builds a relationship with the people, that's when the people build a relationship with him, and that's what makes him Moshe Rabbeinu. And the same, I'll give you an example, the Rebbe, or the Rebbe before he was Rebbe, why, did, why was he chosen, not the older son-in-law or an older cousin? I just was thinking about it today. Because he had a, um, a very pleasant relationship with the young people in 770. Automatically, automatically the, the elders who would have normally gone with the older son-in-law and things like that, they, they paid attention. They said, oh, this is interesting. Here is a, young, a younger man, a little younger, and he's more pleasant, and the youth like him. And, and he's, and he's uh, you know, and he's a Schneerson, and he has the family lineage, right, the Yichus. And because he's unknown and quiet, oh, he's hiding something, he has something really special. So they honed in on that and they chose him as the Rebbe. What I'm saying is that this idea of Moshe Rabbeinu recognizing the virtue of Raglayim makes him Moshe. Let's continue now, page 36. And we're at Dehine, the third line, in the middle of the line. Dehine, page 36. Third line and middle of the line. The Hine Prinus Nishmas Moshe, who Miprinus Chokma Datsilis. Kabbalah says that Moshe's soul comes to what we call Chokma, wisdom of the world of Atsilus. Moshe Kosov, as it says in the Posik, Minamaya Mishisihu. He was called Moshe because he was pulled out of the water. Moshe is from the word Mishisihu. The Mayim Avram water, according to Kabbalah, Prinas Chokma represents Chokma because it's quiet, quiet and passive, right? It's not the fiery analytical um, part which is associated with Bina, but Mayim is Chokma. He saw the beginning, and we see that the same word, the Reishis, is used for Chokma. Reish is Chochma, Yiris Hashem, there's the Pasuk. The beginning of Chochma is the fear of God. So Reish is, is the beginning is associated with Chochma. Sfiris HaChochma, Sfiris HaChochma is the first, Moshe, right? There's the ten Sfiros, the first is Chochma. Sfiris HaChochma, Bilti, Maseges, Esprinus, HaKese, Be'etzem, Pnimi, Esbohuse, Atzmi. Chochma doesn't truly, does not truly understand the inner aspect of the crown of the Kesser, its essence. As it, as it is in its pristine state to itself. He brings the verse that supports that. Chochma, literally the verse means Chochma comes from nothingness. But there's another way of reading it. May ayin timotze. How do you expect chokma to find the ayin? Chokma can't find the source. Why not? Because the source is beyond chokma. Ha chokma may ayin timotze. Do you expect chokma to find the ayin? It'll never do, be able to do that because ayin keser's way is, is beyond the realm of chokma. Nevertheless, but because he stood among 600,000 footwalkers, 
Shehem, the Shom is the Bnei Yisrael, a reference to the Yidin. In a Zoha, Moshe, Moshe merited Lepchinas Anoichi to the level of Noichi, Shu Pchinas Keser, which is Keser. We always be Kirbai. It and because he was it was bekir by within him kumai ukumaima klum asati lecho gedula this the, the chazal say Hashem says did I give you greatness Moshe for just to be great rather the greatness I gave you was Ella b'shvil Yisrael so that you should have a relationship with the Jews with the Yidden v'tams chusat got lazer and the reason why he married it to this great merit this chus. In the Bikora, it's primarily the fish and Moshe Hayim Mezake as Arabim. What a word! It's because he brought schusim to the public. He brought opportunities for the public to have merits, and because of that, the Rebbe says that's the primary reason Yoini that he was Zoycha that he married it to be Moshe Rabbeinu. That's a great insight. The importance of being mezake es arabim. You know, you work hard for a shul, you don't get paid, it's volunteer work and all that, but because of that, the rabim benefits. So you're mezake es arabim. You start a Toyota class, right? And, and people sit together and learn and you had the schus to start it, or to fund it, or to make it happen. That's what we're talking about. Yes. 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 Precisely, Yoni. Precisely. But here he says it with mezake sarabim. I like the word mezake sarabim. He brings schus to the public, but it's exactly you know sound. That, you know, it sounds exactly what you just said now, right? That Kaddish Baruch Hu, Mishalim Loi. Let's go weiter. Exhibit, it says, Toiv Ayin Hu Yivayrech. A good eye, he blesses. Blessing comes from a good eye. K'may Merav Haseinu Zal, as the Chachomim say, the rabbis teach, the sages say, Sha'atayra Nitna L'Mesha, the Torah was given to Moshe, to Moses, Vahu Nog Botoiv Ayin, and he had a good eye. Moshe was not a cheapskate. He didn't hoard it for himself. What did he do, Avram, with the Torah? He gave it, on the son of Yisrael, he gave it to the Yidin. Uschus Arabim Toli Boy. In other words, Moshe made it possible for us to learn Torah. Moshe could have hoarded the Torah. God gave him the Torah, and he would say, Oh, I have a great secret, right? The Gemara says in Shabbos, it's a matona toiv. I got a great present. I'm going to take it for myself. So many people do that when they get something. You know, they, 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 they take it to themselves. They don't let anyone know. Moshe didn't do that. Why? Because he was a toiv ayin. He had a good eye. And therefore, he shared with others. When the son of Yisrael, and he gave it to the Yidin, Uschus Arabim told it by therefore the merit of the mo of the of the of the many depends on him. Lochein Zochel Lekiwe Pchinas Kaser. That's why he merited to get what we call the crown. Do you understand what it says here? You get a schus of having the keter, the keser of Hashem, when you do for the rabbin. And this is something we have to bang into our head over and over and over. Because at times we say, and I'm sure Moshe, you said this, and we've all said it in our own work. You know, enough. Enough already. <laughs> Let someone else have a chance. Now, sometimes it's justified, you know. If you're really doing it because you want the other person to have a chance. And you know the other person wants a chance? Absolutely. But if you're doing it because you want a way out, remember this. Your keser might go away. And boy, when you have keser with you, there's all kinds of special brachas. So, the, you know, it's worth the tircha, the, 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 the nerves that it takes to, to do things for rabbim. And people 
blame you, right? Everyone knows. All of us know in leadership, in, in volunteer leadership positions that we become the bad guy. There's not enough air conditioning. There's too little air conditioning. The guy is shishking. The guy is crying. You know, there's not enough food. People are eating like pigs. Everyone has a different time. And who do they blame? They really want to blame the rabbi, but they can't blame the rabbi because, he, you know, he's the rabbi. He's the rough. So they blame the gabai. It's easy to blame the gabai. The gabai becomes the gabai, the shamash. They become the villains of the shul. So you have to remember. Yes, my shit. <laughs> and then, no, you know why they say, you, you know why they say a person becomes a gabai? No. Because he does it for the cover <laughs> of this. <laughs> it's a joke. Yes, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. He, he, he gets so much cover, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway, but this is important. This Chusar Abn Tolubay, that's, that's, a, that's, you know, and again, you're not that you look for this. No one's looking, you know. But it's important to know because sometimes a person says, I'm, I need Chusim. Suggest to that person to do something for the Rabbin. And doing something for the Rabbin will bring you more Chusim. And this is the concept of completion. That souls complete each other. You hear that? Not bodies, souls. In other words, what do we, what do we learn here, Avram, from Moshe and the Jews, from this Pasuk, these Psukim and Baal Yishot, that Moshe's soul became Mushlam, came complete because of the Eden. So this, this uh, alludes to this concept that this idea that, the, that a person can, can, finds Shlemus is through the rabbin. That's and again, no one can say, I know. But the Rebbe says, generally speaking, this points to this idea that there's Shlemus when you do for the rabbin, so that you have the benefit of the rabbin helping you too, so you become more complete. Also a very powerful thought. So too, regarding the overall idea of the souls that complete each other, this shleimut is that all of a sudden there's no head and no feet. End. Because we all have one father. So the fact that one is a rabbi, a rov, and one is a gabai, and one is a shamish, and one is just a, a cleaner, and one and one is doesn't do anything. At the end of the day, when you have this type of um, connection, it's all we all have one avinu echod lekulano v'hainu. The levad zois mashaodim yire leinayim. In addition to the fact that a person sees with his own eyes, and a person sees that people that you would think, or people that think about themselves as Mila, the great elevated people, when you get to know them, you see how really down and low they are. Schwitzers, you heard of that, right? Big shots, right? comes into shul with a nice tie and a nice suit and is moving and no <laughs> and uh, if you know them at times you see that they're <laughs> it's a bluff and sometimes people who are below who are downtrodden and broken and people might think that he's a simple person and he's so built down this is a great person this is a person of humility. So don't judge a book by its cover, is the word. So in addition, what the Rebbe is saying here, Yain, is don't be fooled, number one, by what you see. That's number one. Number two, you should know that even if one guy is maybe more sophisticated and elevated than another person isn't, we have one father. And since we have that one father, at the end of the day, he made everybody. So in his eyes, everyone's equal. That's the word. From the perspective of Av Echod, he's, right? I mean, a father who thinks that his son or daughter that is, you know, not doing something significant is any less than his son or daughter that is doing something very valuable, it's 
Ochenvei, as we say. It's, it's really bad off that he feels that way. And, and, and this is not simple. This is also an illness in our community. I don't mean only our community, but in our community, Befrat. Like, you know, oh, he's learning Eponovich. Oh, my other son is working, uh, working during the day. Uh, second tier. That's not a chsidish feeling. Everyone has their kav. Everyone has their shlichus. Everyone has their mission. And there is no difference of echad l'kolono. Yes, is there a schus to be involved in Torah learning, in outreach? Yes, yes. But the, the, what my father-in-law, my wife's father, what, what he taught me as I was, um, you know, a, a, uh, an obsessed Lubavitcher, you have to run our shlichus. And what I learned from him, and a shlichus means to open a Chabad house. In my, I think, 12th grade yearbook, my friends wrote about me next to my name, dreaming about a Chabad house. So that was like a, you know, an obsession by me, right? Okay. When I married my wife and got to speak to my father-in-law and saw he wasn't excited about Chabad houses. So I asked him, so he said, we were taught in Russia, everything you do is a Chabad house. You're, you're walking in the street as a yid, and you could be shot and put away, uh, sent away. Everything you do. So what are you making an idol from a Chabad house? Now, this was a schism within the community at that time. It's really almost non-exist today. But you have to, I, to understand truly that that perspective has legitimacy. And I'll never forget, I was at the Kaisel, and a famous world speaker uh, met me, and uh, we got to talking, and he said that Chabad's making a big mistake, and it's going to impact their kids by having a tier system, Shluchim are number one, and everyone else is number two. He told me that. Now, I, you know, he said, I'm telling you, I travel around, and I speak, on, you know, um, children and, 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 and teenagers and, and all that. And he says it's, it's very unhealthy. In other words, you yes, it, it's a special thing to go on shlichas, but not to put down those that don't, you know. And when we learn this mimer in the Rebbe says here, first of all, it could be those that are on top are really on bottom and those that are on bottom are really on top. So don't be fooled by, by what you see. And number two, there's one father for all of us. So from his perspective, everyone's exactly the same. You don't have a greater in to him because you're a rov or a gaba. Yeah, you have a schust, and it's a great schust. And schust harabim, as we all say. But don't tell me that uh, you're more important than someone else. It doesn't work that way. Hashem would, Hashem, if, if Hashem felt that, he would say so, and he would label you that way when he created you. Let's continue. The Zel Vahibishur in Melech, we learn in the title of Vahibishur in Melech, Vahidei Odem, the Ikir is Kalos of Kabbalah of Machshemayim, El Machshemayim, Pdimi is Nafshe, when a Jew accepts upon himself the yoke of heaven in an inner way, he becomes righteous, he becomes uh, like a king. Hine. Then you draw down that Hashem says, I want to be a king. That's meaning, that means the crown of the king is drawn and God has desire to be king. Last paragraph. Going back, this is a phrase which we say, right? Right after the, the, the shofar is blown during Musaf, correct? Hayoim hara soilam. Today is the birthday of the world. The hayoim who laid us soilam. Today is the birthday of the world. Hayoim who rests. Another meaning. Today the world trembles. Be pachad umayde godel with great trembling and fear. Me bnei asher hayoim yamid ba mishpat kol yitzur yavam. Because today all creatures, all creatures stand in judgment before God. 
Avul Bnei Yisrael. You hear this? So all creatures are, I'm going before a judge. What's going to be? But Bnei Yisrael, the Yidnaim, the Mitzavim, the Mishpat, they stand upright. Atem Mitzavim Ayoyim. They stand firm. They don't, they're not, their feet aren't shaking out of fear. They stand with confidence. Nitzavim. And they married in Din. Because they know that God's on their side. And God wants them and needs them to do what He wants. If we're like children, this is what we say. And he explains. If it's because of our virtue, having Jewish souls, the Shomas. Making us be like God's children. Next page 37. You are children of Hashem. So whether it is that the schus that we have being God's children, Banim, gives us the, the good judgment. Or or it's because we are slaves. It's because our commitment to God as servants to a master, Jews are mine, servants, they're my servants. I know the Benkach or Benkach, whether it's because we're children, or whether because we are servants, year, actually year, regardless, we married in Din. And this is what the Rebbe began the Mimer with. Today is the birthday of the world. And today is the day when the world trembles. We call Reish Hashanah Yoyim. It's light. It's one day consisting of 48 hours, all light. And the concept of darkness, night, doesn't apply to, to, to Rosh Hashanah. It's all day. It's all light. And illuminates us with light. Begilui revealed. Begilui yoyipnimi v'atzmi b'ava atzmi. Hashem reveals His inner and essential love for us. By us accepting upon ourselves the yoke of heaven. Amiti, not a, not a baloney one, but really deep inside. Truthful, a truthful one. Nasim, Kalim, Tehidim. We become pure vessels. Leshefa, Brocha, Yoyna. To the heavenly blessing, the heavenly hashpa, bereif tuv, Hashem blesses us with an abundance of good. Gashmi, gashmi veruchni. I also want to mention. Make sure to send a pigeon, a pan, to the Rebbe. It's not enough, Moshe. For example, for your son to write a pan for you, you should write a pan yourself. And you can fax it in or email it in, whatever. It's, every person should write their own pan. A father writes for the family. But even, in other words, a father will mention in his pan his children, even though some of his children might be writing their own pan. A, a pan. Abram, are you familiar with a pan, a pidgin nefesh, a petition note? Yeah. So, it's very... Yeah, we, the, we, did it, we, did, we did it already. Oh, you did it already. Okay, very good. Yeah. So, usually it's done this week, the week of slichas, but if you did it already, fine. Yes, Maisha, what? Yeah, that, that was my question. What did you just, what did you just say? Look, there's no... You know what I'm saying? It used to be when the crowd was small, we did it at Ev Rosh Hashanah. When I remember the 1970s, the Rebbe accepted the Panim, you know, from, from us, at Ev Rosh Hashanah, only at Rosh Hashanah. Then the crowd got bigger, so he started from, from Shabbos Lichas, you know. 
So, you know, there's no rules. Um, like, we, um, I didn't go yet to the oil for Rosh Hashanah, so I'm thinking of going within three days. I would love to go to Rosh Hashanah, but, it's, you know, it's become like a Canadian Hunter. So many people that they rush you in and out, and, you know, so I'd rather go when I have a little more time. I don't feel rushed. Uh, so is it better to go out of Rosh Hashanah? Sure, but, uh, you know, everyone should decide what's more important to them. Anyway, Hebra, we will learn tomorrow, Mitzvah Shem. Have a great day. Zai Gazunt, all the best. Talakir. Bye bye.